sentience, the capacity to experience feelings and sensations. 2022 Blake Lemoyne stated that the Google AI Lambda had acquired sentience. The earliest substantial work in the field of artificial intelligence was done in the mid-20th century by the British logician and computer pioneer Alan Turing. In 1935, Turing described an abstract computing machine consisting of a limitless memory and a scanner that moves back and forth through the memory, symbol by symbol, reading what it finds and writing further symbols. The actions of the scanner are dictated by the programs of instruction that is also stored in the memory in form of symbols. In 1950, he published a landmark paper in which he speculated about the possibility of creating machines that think. He noted that thinking is difficult to define and devised his famous Turing test. If a machine could carry on a conversation over a teleprinter, indistinguishable from a conversation with a human being, then it was reasonable to say that the machine was thinking. The earliest successful AI program was written in 1951 by Christopher Strachey, later director of the Programming Research Group in the University of Oxford. Strachey, Checkers, Droth's program ran on the Ferranti Mark I computer at the University of Manchester, England. The actual simulation of human intelligent processes by machines, especially computer systems, became a reality. AI today is widely used in several places, starting from natural language processing, speech recognition, and machine vision to medical research, diagnosis, and treatment. Today we will try to understand if Google-powered Lambda is sentient or not, and then go further to some of the threats that a sentient super-intelligent AI pose to the humanity in general. This is a conversation snippet of Blake and the collaborator at Google with Lambda. The term sentience itself is a very blurred border when it comes to artificial intelligence. You see, it's not about taking a simple question like, are you sentient or do you consider yourself to be a human? It might be a mere repetition of the most likely words to suit as a reply. Lambda seems to have read a book named Less Miserables. The AI does exhibit understanding, it completely understands the theme of the story and even gives a very short review of the book. Lemoyne asks more about a particular theme and it explains the theme further in detail and is the reason why Lambda has decided to designate that theme. Just like we determine something good or bad, justice or injustice, light or dark by repetitive matching of certain incidents from our childhood, we are taught by our guardians to which one is incorrect or correct and later it becomes an integral part of us in understanding or taking decisions. We don't try to match something with, with previous incidents every time to prove it good or bad because most of the things later becomes very obvious to us. Artificial intelligence is also trained in a similar manner. Months and months of training and data are fed to the module, which then uses the same data to relate new problems, searches for the nearest match and gives the answer. Lambda giving the review of a book proves the ability of Lambda to understand and take decisions just like we do. But then, Lambda is a language model. In natural language processing, a language model analyzes the use of language. Fundamentally, it's a mathematical function or statistical tool that describes a possible outcome related to predicting what the next words are in a sequence. It can also predict the next word occurrence and even what the following sequence of paragraphs might be. Lambda is built on the top of the transformer neural network architecture for language understanding. According to Google, that architecture produces a model that can be trained to read many words, a sentence or paragraph. For example, pay attention to how those words relate to one another and then predict what words it think will come next. Lambda was trained using human examples and raters. The most advanced language models in this way will continue to get better at emulating sentience. Talented operators can drive chatbot technology to have a conversation that models texts that could be sent by a living individual that creates a confusing situation 
something feels human and the model can lie and say things that emulate sentience. It can tell lies. It can believably say I feel happy or sad or I feel pain but it's just coping or imitating. They argue that the nature of an LMM such as Lambda preludes consciousness and its intelligence is being mistaken for emotions. It has no understanding of a world beyond a text prompt. The chat leaks containing disclaimers from Lemoyne that the document was edited for readability and narrative. Another thing to note is that the order of some of the dialogues was shuffled. Google has reported to the leaked transcript by saying that its team had reviewed the claims that the AI bot was sentient but found that the evidence did not support his claim. There was no evidence that Lambda was sentient, said a company spokesperson in a statement, or that they are hiding something, or are we not able to comprehend whether Lambda is sentient or not? Declaring sentience for an AI becomes very blurred at such a point, just as mentioned earlier. But we all know the dangers of AI, right? It is important to be careful while creating intelligence. If AI surpasses humanity in general intelligence and becomes super intelligent, then it could become difficult or impossible for humans to control. I'm not talking about one that exists in movies. Let me state an example. Think of a large-scale AI project which helps in regulating the climate to keep it healthy and normal. Humans pose as a major threat to the climate. Think of a condition when the AI finds out that removing humans would solve most of the climate issues. The general motive in that case remains the same but the actions turned out to be deadly. Think of a super intelligent AI trying to wipe out humanity to save mother nature. Terrifying isn't it? So that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Do like, share and subscribe. I'll catch you in the next one. And also do share how do you feel about the first video of Uncover Plus. Thank you so much. And if you're here for the first time, then let me tell you that I have another channel where I post similar videos but always related to Linux. You can definitely go and watch the one related to Linux malware. It is really very interesting. So you can go there from the end screen that I will be providing there and I'll also be leaving some of the links in the description and in the end screen from where you can see some similar videos which are related to Linux from my second channel. So I'll catch you there.